So for roofing, I, uh, I, I started going through material and I, I realized I got to do this in two videos. Uh, there's a lot about roofing. There's an entire chapter in the IRC that talks about roofing. And, um, but yet it's, it's so simple. You would, at least you would think, right? It's like, well, I'm going to tear off some roofing, put some new roofing on. What's the big deal? Uh, true in a sense. And so I'm going to start off. I want to just go through pictures and kind of the process, um, that way for, for you, you those of you that uh, don't want to deal with the boring code side of it, uh, you can skip the next video and uh, hopefully just this uh, tutorial will just kind of give you a good idea on what's required based on where you live and what type of roofing you're putting on. And so I want to start, first start talking about, um, well, let's, let's talk about different scenarios. Um, whatever roofing you've got, you're going to tear it off. You're going to put a new roof on. Uh, you're going to put a material on. Um, maybe you want to do a layover, which would mean like putting roofing over an existing layer. Um, all those are fine as long as you follow, you know, code requirements. And, uh, so if you're, you're tearing it all off and you're going to, and you're going to re-roof, you got to make sure you have proper sheathing. Um, and that sheathing has to be what they call a solid deck. And that really what it does is it comes down to the manufacturer. The code requires it, but it's for the manufacturer. Um, if you're putting in asphalt shingles or metal shingles or any, any type of shingle, it's going to ask for screws or nails or whatever the fastener requirement is so many per shingle. Well, you don't want to be putting your screws in if they're going into, into holes. So let's look at a quick picture of what kind of what I'm talking about. So this is a house that I showed up at. I did an inspection at it and they just, they weren't ready yet, but I thought it was, it was a, a great picture to kind of show. This is what they call a skip deck. So if you have a house, you go up into your attic and you shine your light up there and you see, oh man, I can see these wood slats and I can see gaps and maybe I can see uh, felt, you know, between the gaps. It's like, ah, I have, you have skip deck on, on your house. And so if you were to tear your roof off, you would need to resheet it. Um, also, if you have concerns, you could crawl up on your roof and tear up a couple shingles, find your way all the way down to the wood decking and make sure that you're good to go. Uh, there are instances where uh, there's multiple layers on the roof and the guys will go and they'll tear off the first layer and they'll see um, uh, underlayment and then they'll cut the underlayment and there'll be another layer under it or another layer. Uh, where I'm at, it's not uncommon to find three or even four layers. You know, there might be like wood shake shingles that are at the bottom or, or the cedar shake that had been there since the house was built. Um, you cannot lay over over that. It's got to be tore off. Um, you can do a layover over one existing layer, but it cannot be. Uh, there's a few requirements, right? It can't be like water soaked shingles. Um, it can't be uh, a wood shake. It's got to be tore off. Um, but you could go over like an existing single layer of asphalt shingles. Maybe it's like a three tab and you just want to go put a second layer over it. You can do that. That'd be kind of the only situation for the most part for a layover. Um, you're not going to be able to obviously lay over like clay tiles or something like that. You're going to have to take them off and put new ones on. But in this particular instance, just talking about sheeting, you would need to resheet this roof. And that's what they're going to end up doing in this or what they did do is they uh, uh, went in there, cleaned up all of the damaged stuff. They'll end up adding some, some sheeting here. And then they'll have to put a second layer over it so it all sits flat, and nice, and clean. And it's not necessarily for structural purposes, just so you know. It's for the manufacturer. It's to make sure that the nails actually go into something solid and you're not nailing through little gaps and then having your shingles pull up layer later. So that's the purpose of the sheeting. Um, so now let's dive into um, underlayment, right? So you've got the roof sheeted or you already had existing plywood, so you tore all the roofing off, you pounded all the nails in, you have a nice flat surface to deal with. So now you're gonna install an underlayment, which would be like your felt, your ice and water shield. So you're gonna have that, that first layer of protection. And so depending on where you live, if you live in a cold climate, um, so you know, your Denver's, Wisconsin's, uh, New York's, 
anything where you get, if you get snow and you can get ice buildup, then most likely they're going to require ice and water shield. I would suggest that you contact your building department and just ask them, hey, am I required to install ice and water shield? And they'll tell you if you do or don't. Ice and water shield is, um, it's a sticky back material and it's, it's thicker and it's, it's for protecting against ice dams at the bottom of your eaves because that is where you have your greatest heat loss is where your roof and your wall exterior wall come together. And so when you have that heat loss right there, it can freeze and thaw and you can get ice dams that will crawl up underneath your shingles. And so they want to make sure that you don't have any what they call ice damming. So they require ice and water shield. Right here in this point right here. This is where your greatest heat loss is. Heat goes right through here and then you get ice damming right here in this section right here. So code requires that, you're t that you install ice and water shield 24 inches inside the exterior wall. So if this is my exterior wall, if I was to go in a horizontal plane 24 inches and go straight up, I'd have to have ice and water shield from there all the way down to the edge of the eave. So if you live in that colder climate, now again, if you live in a warm climate, if you're in Florida or Texas, it's probably not required. You could call your building department just to verify, um, but you just use you know, a synthetic or standard felt and, and be okay. But for us, for myself, I have lots of snow outside right now, and uh, I'm glad I have ice and water on my roof because it's pretty cold up here. But um, anyways, the uh, the requirement is is 24 inches inside the exterior wall. And so if I was to want to get to, let's see here, another picture. So again, that's the sheeting. Um, here is ice and water shield right here. And so this is a great example of sheeting over a skip deck right here. You can see these particular roofers are in the process of putting new sheeting up um, or they're patching a section. And so this is old skip deck. They had to go over the top of it and they've installed, you can kind of see it's like sparkly looking. It's like the uh, material on it is kind of um, uh, sandpaper-ish, if that makes sense. So it's sticky back. They've stuck it directly to the sheeting. So if, you, if you're tearing off your roof and you get everything done and clean, but there's little sections or you left the existing uh, felt thinking like, oh, what's an extra layer of felt? Awesome. But where you put your ice and water shield, make sure you tear it all off. You want that ice and water shield to stick to the deck because it's a pretty sticky material. And then they've gone in and started installing their felt over the top of that and carrying their way up. So this is a, uh, I, I made a, a, a correction call these particular roofers had had it all dried in and I noticed that they didn't have enough ice and water shield well you have to carry two feet inside the exterior wall and because they have this covered porch they didn't carry it far enough let's see let me get a close up so you can see right here you know they've they've in a straight line they've kind of carried it to right here well they got to be two feet inside the exterior wall which would mean they need to carry it two feet this way and then go straight up. So what they did is, is they, they had to tear off some of the synthetic felt right here, and they were gonna add some ice and water shield, which is, you can see it right here, they tore it off. They were gonna put it back, put on some ice and water for me, and they ice, also ice and watered their um, valley, and so that they'll be good to go, and they got approved and, and, and did a really nice job. But that kind of covers um, sheeting, underlayment, so let me talk, let's talk about drip edge. So drip edge is, is a metal that goes around all of the eaves and gables. So it follows everything all the way around the house. It is a code requirement now that all roofs have a drip edge. And we have right here a picture. Now this is a, this is a garage. So any garages, um, accessory structures that are unheated do not require ice and water shield regardless. So even in a cold climate, you've got a garage, you just park your truck in there or you got storage, you don't have to put up ice and water shield. A lot of roofers do it anyways, because you never know if someday you're going to end up putting a heater in there or something that you might have it in there. But you don't have to put uh, uh, ice and water shield on it. But this is a drip edge. 
and you can see that the drip edge is installed over the top of the um, felt but then on the bottom it's underneath the felt right it's following the flow of drainage so that if there's ever a leak or water gets under here it's not going to flow underneath the drip edge and then go between the drip edge and the in the wood right so anyways just when you're putting on your drip edge you now there's different types of drip edge when you go to buy it you just get whatever you think will look good on your house but as long as you do have it installed you should be good to go so there we talked about drip edge we've got the the house sheeted we've got all of our first layer of protection our underlayment on we've got our drip edge on and so now you're going to install the shingles uh, or metal roofing or metal panel or uh, maybe it's a real light slope right it's not a very big slope and so you have to put on a material that's rated for uh, almost you know a flat roof or like a 212 and so you might have to do like what they call a roll roof where it's like you know another thick layer of ice and water shield type material that you roll on and it sticks on um, make sure that whatever you buy for materials meets the requirement for the slope that you have um, and so then after that you get your materials and you're going to install them per your manufacturer's installation instructions right so you're going to put these things on and as you go you're going to flash it you're going to get your boots for your right here so you're going to get your boots for your for your any of your plumbing pipes you're going to flash your chimneys Let's see if i've got a better picture on the next one here so you're going to flash your chimneys here um, right here you're going to do uh, roof to wall step flashing and you want to make sure you get your kickers in there right you can see how they've kicked this flashing out so that any water that comes down right here will flow out and not go behind your siding so you're going to flash everything as you go um, if you have just a simple gable roof you won't have a lot of these situations you just put on your drip edge and you just roof it on up and you make sure you get all your flashings and your boots in there you've got the thing roofed and now you need to make sure you have proper venting well these are can vents so can vents um, can be one component of installation of a venting or you can put in what they call a ridge vent when it comes to ridge vent make sure you install it per your manufacturer's installation instructions i think you've probably heard that a ton from me um, but it's huge i have yet as an inspector to see a set of installation instructions for a ridge vent that does not require lower eave soffit venting so if you have an older house you have no soffit venting you have no uh you know any type of can vents down low or anything like that you either need to put them in if you do a ridge vent or you might want to just put a bunch of cans up above um, you also might have gable end vents so on the uh, end of your house you might have some big old round or square vents right in there those help meet that requirement for venting and when it comes to venting you're venting it on a 1 to 150 ratio and what i mean by that is is let's just for for numbers let's say you have a 600 square foot house so 600 square foot divided by 150 is 4 so that means you need 4 square feet of venting if you don't have soffit vent so you have no venting down below let's look at a better picture here let's just say that there's no venting down here um, you don't have any venting and so when you put your can vents up here you need to make sure that you um, do it on a 1 to 150 ratio so you're going to look at each of your can vents like how many square feet does one can have and you're going to put in enough to make sure that you meet that requirement so be four square feet on a 600 square foot house so this picture this is just kind of pretending that this is all an attic right so this would be a whole attic you would add lower soffit vent if you added lower soffit vent or it existed well then the ratio goes to one to 300 so now all of a sudden you only need two square feet of venting so then let's just say you got you know a foot down here and a foot down here and you had a foot up here well you have more than you need right um, and that's pretending that this is just one big attic so let's hop into the bonus room what do you got a bonus room in your house since you're like i don't have a lot of attic it's all livable space like, okay yep that's fine and that's kind of what this picture actually is 
is so here's a bonus room right here here would be the ceiling so you have a little bit of attic up there you have a little bit of attic here and a little bit of attic there code requires that all attics get vented you got to get the moisture out and and as an inspector i would tell you more venting the better you really really want to make sure that you get everything vented so what i would tell you is is in these spaces just put a couple can vents down in these spaces right just make sure you get you get the moisture out that's the big thing is get the moisture out um same up in here so you know you're not going to call this a 600 square foot house you know because your attic's not that big so you just measure across here and then measure the length and kind of get a general idea and make sure you, you vent it properly um, so now you've got it vented um, you've covered the requirement you're going to install it pre manufacturer's installation instructions you installed your roofing pre manufacturer's installation instructions and so you've got the roof's done so if we hop over to here you've got this chimney right here you flashed it but you got to counter flash it so you can see right here they've actually went and cut they've taken a grinder and cut into the cmu block and they've slid metal flashing and then they bent it down so it goes over the top so if this is your roof to wall flashing right here and then they have flashing that goes over the top like this so that water or snow buildup cannot get in there in the bottom i've had a lot of roofers they complain about it and they're like and they just try to put like blackjack or caulk or silicone or something up there it's not allowed it's got to be cut in it has to be an adhered cut in material because caulk any of that type of stuff the sun's going to crack it out and then over the years it's just going to go away so they want an actual metal flashing that's bent over and protects that chimney that should cover the bulk of roofing let's talk a little bit about materials like i said depending on whatever material you use you're going to want to install it per your manufacturer's installation instructions you know that shingles they might require so many nails um, if it's like clay or something like that you might have to set stack and set in a certain in a certain manner so that it stays and holds I did want to touch though on panel so metal panel roofing so there's metal shingle roofing which you know would have its specific attachments to it but a metal panel roof right it might go all the way from the top let's see, move myself out of the way here so it might go all the way from the bottom all the way up to the top it might be one piece right and they're like three feet on center so the only gap is right you know where they overlap and um i've showed up and looked at roofs before and they maybe only have like a layer a layer of screws down here and a layer of screws up here it's like well look at your installation instructions because they at least from what i've seen most of the time you know they're going to want screws every 24 inches on center and they're going to want them in between each rib well if your ribs are nine inches apart you're doing screws every nine inches and 24 inches going up the the roof so that, that's a lot of screws uh, but i've also been uh, caught myself because I've showed up and looked at roofing and metal roofing and I said, hey, I think you guys are short. And they said, oh no, the screws are hidden below the tab. So they showed me the installation instructions. It's like, yep, you know, you got me. There's a layer of screws and then the, the next flange. So if, if like this is a rib and then the next set of panel goes over the top, well, then right here it was all screwed off. And then the panel went over it and covered it up. I couldn't see it, which is great, right? It makes the look, the appeal, the aesthetics of it look a lot better um, but just make sure you cover that make sure you consider all those different attachment requirements when you're putting it all together i think that should cover the basics on roofing it's a this is a, a big component it's simple but there are a few little things that you need to know so that you can do it right and i just want to make sure that i cover that i'm going to do another video here and kind of dive through the code requirements on it just so you kind of know where I'm pulling all this information from. Uh, just install pre manufacturers, install instructions, solid deck, good ice and water if you live in a cold area, melt it up good, vent it good, flash it good. 